Hello and welcome to Crazy Danish Hacker. Today we're going to learn how to transmit radio signal with Raspberry Pi. More specifically, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi 3 model B and we are going to transmit a radio signal using the GPIO pin 4. But first, let's say that we already have something installed on our SD card and we want to format the SD card. So when you plug it into your Windows computer, it might look like this. And if you select properties, you will see that it says that you only have 62 megabyte, even though in my case, I think it's a 16 gigabyte card. So in that case, you might be wondering, what the hell? So don't worry. You can use a tool such as SD Formatter. Uh, you can also look for other guides on how to do it on Linux. But in this guide, I'm going to focus on doing it on Windows. So you select the correct drive. In this case, it's F in my case. And then you select Option. And then you select On, on Format Size Adjustment. Click OK. And Format. And click OK again. And OK again. And now that it has been formatted, which only took a few seconds, you will see that it says that we now have a total space of 14.4 gigabytes available now, which is a lot better than 60 megabytes. So now we can try to, for example, write the operating system back to the SD card, as we've done also in a previous video. But knowing how to format your card in case you want to start from scratch is quite useful if you want to start from scratch again. So now that we have a clean SD card, we select the correct device here and then we open the ISO image that we want to write to it. And we click write and we confirm that it's the correct device so you're not overriding data on the wrong device. Click yes. And this will take 10 to 15 minutes, more or less. After we are done writing, we will have to perform another step before booting our Raspberry Pi. So once it has finished writing the operating system, we can click OK, which I've already done, and then click Exit. And then we can open it right here, the SD card that is. And then we select New, Text Document, and then we rename it to SSH. This will enable SSH so we can SSH in remotely because without this file, it will be disabled by default and then we have to use HDMI cable and hook it up to a screen, which I prefer not to in this case. So now that the SD card is ready, I've inserted it into the Raspberry Pi and I will just plug in the Ethernet cable and also the power cable. That way we can connect to it and SSH into it. So we can see that there's power on now. So we'll just place it over here. And while it's powering up, which will take a few moments, we will just have a look at the Hackaday article. So you can see this is also Raspberry Pi. It's a different version. But you can see that this is the GPIO 4 pin that we are going to transmit the radio signal on. And they even describe, you know, which program that they have been playing with and other stuff. Now I've been playing with this a bit, so I know how it works quite well now. So you can use the most basic program, which is just called PiFM. This works quite well if you just install it by itself. You can also try Pi FM RDS. That's like an expanded version, which is a bit more cool because it also shows the RDS info, which is like, you know, when you're in your car, if you have a car or if you've been in a car, then you can see on some car radio systems, it shows the channel name and the same thing, or this program can do the same thing. So that's pretty cool as well even though it doesn't always work, but it's pretty cool. 
and this project also works with all, pretty much all of the Raspberry Pis so that's also pretty great so there's also another project that we can try on afterwards so that's called RPI TX and that's a more advanced version even though that version does not use wideband FM to transmit our FM signal so it's a very tiny signal but it's good enough to listen to and test but the cool thing about RPI TX is that you can transmit AM uh, narrowband FM and FSQ, SSB and VFO so that's very cool that you can transmit all of that just with a Raspberry Pi and not even a, a software defined radio so we will try that as well later on that is so it's also a good idea sometimes to look at some of the issues for example the uh, it, the frequency shifts during transmission and if you scroll down to the bottom it looks like it has to do with this setting in the config file so that's for example a good thing to know in case you're experiencing experiencing the same problem then you can try and set it to one and that may so solve your problem and in case you want to change the pin for example and that's even a close ticket so make sure sometimes you check the close tickets too because it's not in the documentation on the front page right here you can change the uh, apparently this one uses GPIO 18 instead of 4 and you can do that by using the C or dash C1 option so that's also pretty good to know as well but anyway let's go back to uh, Pi FM RDS and let's see if our Raspberry Pi has booted up so this should be the local IP address in my case if you don't know the IP address and it's connected to your router then you can log into your router and look at the attached devices sometimes it's called NAT sometimes it's called attached devices just click around and you will see a list of IP addresses and associated MAC addresses as well and one of them will be the Raspberry Pi so we will try and connect and see if it's the correct IP address if it's not we'll find out so in this case it actually looks like it's the wrong IP address because I am looking at the blinking light right here and you can see it's green and it's also yellow and it's blinking which means that it's prob probably receiving data so because I know exactly how many devices are connected it's probably dot three instead in my case or dot five maybe that's dot five so it looks like it's dot five now and that's a bit odd but whatever so we log in with pi and the password is raspberry and we want to change the password so now that the password has been changed we will just clear the screen and then we will just confirm that we have git installed yes we do that's great and before we continue any further we also want to for example upload some audio files to transmit so in this case I have two files they're basically the same sound but one of them is 48 kilohertz instead of 44 100 I think it is so the way that I transmit to the device is that I use filezilla and I'm in that directory right here so I use sftp and the IP address and then pi and then the password which in my case is just password and then you just double click on them or you just select both and then upload so this goes really fast as you can see so now we have some music that we can transmit as well when it's time so if we go back to this website right here um, what's important to note is that there is a dependency 
So we need to get the dependencies first, but before we do that, we should just run app get and then update first. And that's because we need to make sure that we have the latest uh, information about the packages from the repositories. So that's quite important that we have that. And while it's doing that, let's just have a look at if there's anything else we need to know. So we need to have a recent Linux kernel. Yes, we do because we have an image from 2016 November and you can see that the uh, pre-compiled for Raspberry Pi 1 so that means that we need to recompile them as you can see it looks pretty easy so it's almost done so we will just apt get install this one and then we will follow the instructions right here so we will say sudo apt get and then lips send file dev and select yes make the screen a little bit bigger and wait a few moments so now it has finished in installing lips and file one dev and that means that we can just clear the screen and then we can follow the instructions here so we'll just git clone that's basically just cloning this ul up here or this repository that we're looking at and then we just need to go into the directory, into the source, and make clean, and make. And that should be good. So now we will just connect my favorite RTL SDR to the computer and then we will try and test it out so we'll just clear the screen and we'll move it up here and we'll just have SDR sharp here and let's see sudo pyfm see we have the frequency so we want that to be 107.9, for example. We'll just, yeah, there's nothing there, so that's fine. And you can see that's also how you set it. Audio is the sound wave file. So we'll say audio, press tab two times. And we can send some of the default files that comes with this program, but they're boring, so go two directories up so we go you know one and two yeah or I think it's just one no it's two and then we select the wave file that we uploaded which is this one so if we do that let's see we can also specify a code that's not and we can also specify the program service name for example, let's say it's uh, CDH radio, or I'm not sure how many letters we can have, so we'll just say maybe CDH, and then RT is uh, crazy Danish radio, maybe, and that should be it, I guess. So Let's test here, play, and play. And it's working! So it's not perfect and the signal is all right, but it's not like super good. So if we have the antenna here and I move it very close to it without touching the antenna, you can see that it doesn't make much difference. But let's move the antenna back down here, putting it on the side of the table. If I open the Raspberry Pi 
and then I'll just try and move it over here. And then I touch GPIO4. Now I'm touching the uh, GPIO4 with the small with a small uh, piece of wire, and that functions as an antenna. So this is basically just a small piece of wire that I'm using as an antenna, and you could solder it on, or you could use uh, I don't know a connector for the header, and that basically makes the signal a lot stronger. So that's pretty cool. You can do that, I think. So we'll just close this, and then we'll just stop transmitting. And sometimes it crashes, so if it crashes, I'll plug the power and plug it back in. That, of course, crashes the, the system, so you have to wait for it to restart again, but that's what happens.